I have high hopes for where science will go under Obama. He's talked the talk, you know, so I, uh, he's certainly scientifically literate, literate in the sense that I think he understands issues related to global warming or the energy crisis or, or uh, investments in the National Science Foundation and NASA. I think he has some sense of that. And, I, and he's been appointing reliable advisors in those circles. If you look at who he appointed for uh, Secretary of uh, Energy and his science advisor, these are talented, smart, uh, accomplished scientists. So I, I have high expectations for where it can go. But we know the country's in a serious economic strait right now. So the challenge will be to see what is the balance between the band-aid you will put on the problem that you can sort of stop the hemorrhaging at this moment and the investments that you then insert that will return on that investment later. You need the combination of both. Without the longer term investment, then you're just putting band-aids on as you go forward and nothing ever gets permanently solved. It gives the illusion of a solution, but it doesn't actually change, change what the manifestation of these problems as, as time moves on. I'd like to believe that science is becoming mainstream. It should have never been something that sort of geeky people do and no one else thinks about. Whether or not it will always be what geeky people do, it should as a minimum be what everybody thinks about because science is all around us. And you know, you get the people who are driving with their GPS in their car on their cell phone, now illegally, on their cell phone, saying, I don't need science. What do I need science for? I got my cell phone and my GPS, I'm fine. You know, I don't need space. Meanwhile, GPS is coming from satellites. There's a, there's a, uh, occasionally you get people who take the trappings of science for granted. And I have this, this secret plan. One day I'm going to uh, sneak into someone's house and take away everything that's been discovered or enabled by the space program, for example, spun off from the space program. And just leave them behind, leave them back there and see what, uh, see how they enjoy life or how much of these innovations they take for granted. You only notice them when you don't have access to them anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you learn fast. Yes, I do. In fact, uh, I was three times appointed by President Bush, twice to serve on, a, on commissions. These are sort of high-level gatherings of people with hand-picked expertise to bring their knowledge to bear on a problem that needs to be solved that faces the nation. The first of those was on the future of the aerospace industry, which was on hard times back in the early part of this decade, the beginning of the 20th century, 21st century, and also the future of NASA. These are the two commissions that I was appointed to. Um, my third appointment was on the committee that selected the scientist who the president would award the Presidential Medal of Science to. This is the highest award the nation gives a scientist. So I'm there and I see it. And the, the stereotype of Bush being bad for science, if you ask someone, well, what do you mean by that? In essentially every case, they'll cite no more than two, maybe three occasions where Bush was bad for science. One was sort of stem cell research. Another one was sort of the environment. And that's kind of it, really. And OK, yeah, yeah, he wasn't good for these. There was, there was a regression, uh, the, 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 our, our advance in these fields regressed under Bush. But that's not the entire science portfolio of the nation. The portfolio of the nation includes you know, the physics done under the Department of Education and the National Science Foundation and the National Institute for Health and NASA. There's a whole science portfolio that comes under the, the, uh, that comes under the science advisor's office, the Office of Science and uh, Technology Policy, OSTP. If you look at that portfolio, in fact, major monies were added to that portfolio over the Bush administration. The NIH budget went up. The NASA budget went up, although by less than many people wanted, given what's on its plate. Um, the, in fact, the NIH bu budget nearly tripled over that time. The National Science Foundation budget went up. Meanwhile, under Clinton, President Clinton, over his eight years, the budget for, the, for NASA, for example, dropped by 25% and actual spending power. So it would, it's not accurate to characterize the Bush administration as being anti-science if you measure 
support for science by the flow of money.